right there you guys can see and there's a corresponding mark right up there there's actually two of them um, that is how you're going to time the other pieces now now this is a clutch holding tool right here I'll put a link below in the description of where you can get it and all right guys it's the next day um, I got the engine on the stand here and we're gonna go ahead and continue on the bottom end um, we're gonna start buttoning up around the outside we'll start on this um, ignition side and then after that we'll flip around and work on the clutch side so um, let's hop on this ignition side and get this thing together okay so as far as parts we've got our stator we got our flywheel we got our stator bolts here and we have our um, countershaft o-ring and um, sleeve along with our uh, sprocket um, clip what are you going to call that uh, C clip. I don't know what you call that thing. Anyway, um, we've got our keyway, our nut, and our lock washer for our flywheel. We have our new KTM um, stator cover there and new bolts. And then we've also got our reed cage and our intake boot. So we're going to get all these knocked out right now. That will basically cover all this, this, and that. I'm going to wait on the uh, slave cylinder for the clutch until um, a little bit later. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and work on our counter shaft seal. Now, first thing you wanna put on will be your O-ring and just give it just a little bit of lube, nothing crazy, and that will help help it slide on and help it seal itself. You're gonna wrap it over the counter shaft and just put it on pretty much as far as you possibly can. It's kind of stuck on that little lip there for the, the clip, okay? Go ahead and put it as far on as you can. And then we will take our sleeve and our sleeve is tapered um, on this end. It's got a little, um, I don't know what you want to call it, a valley in there, so um, a ridge. So that is the side where the actual um, O-ring will tuck into. So we'll just slide this over before we do that. Let's put a little lube on it and make it go past that seal nicely. Just a little bit and uh, give everything a, make everything nice and slick. So just slide it on and you'll be able to push it past that seal and there you go counter shaft seal is installed okay now that we've got our sleeve in we can go ahead and mount our sprocket we're going to mount it on just like so let me show you guys this actually before we get too carried away you'll see the sprocket is flat on this side has a lip on this side if you flip it over it just won't go on it's impossible so make sure you put it on the right way um, and then you won't be hating life and then we will take our little retaining clip here Put it inside of our um, tool and just spread it on. And then I'm just going to get a screwdriver and just tap it in. And there we go. You can see it's tucked in behind those splines, so it ain't going nowhere. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is put our stator plate on. Now our stator plate has a timing mark right there. You guys can see, and there's a corresponding mark right up there. There's actually two of them. There's a left and a right mark. This bike, it was set on the left mark. Now, depending on the stator plate you got, or if you've adjusted your timing, you may or may not change that. Um, so I'm gonna put my keyway in before I put the stator plate on, um, just so that I don't forget it and um, have issues putting it in. And when you put the keyway in, make sure you tip it just towards the front. That way it makes it easy to slide your, um, your flywheel on. Okay, so I'm just going to loop this around, get it kind of put into place, and insert my little grommet here on the left for my wiring. All right. Now, more than likely, you'll have these indentations on the stator plate where your screws are going to... Um, kind of tell where your timing was and they're good reference points to go off of but ultimately you want to just set your timing to factory if you don't know any different and uh, you won't have any problems there won't be a guessing game anyway so um, you don't want to torque these really tight um, at the most seven or eight foot pounds is what I would say and that'll keep you from having any problems stripping the cases out or anything like that Okay, next we have our flywheel. Our flywheel is keyed right there, obviously, because we put our key in there. And so you, you can't get the timing wrong on it. And you'll just slip it on, and then we'll put our lock washer on, and our nut. 
and according to KTM, the torque on this is going to be 44 foot-pounds. All right, put our lock washer on, put our nut on, and then we'll get our torque wrench out and put this thing on. Now, in order to torque your flywheel um, without having a gear jammer on the opposite side of the primary gear, basically on the other side of the case, you're gonna need a flywheel holding tool, which I have. Um, so let me grab my tool and my socket and we'll torque this baby down. Okay, now this here is your flywheel holding tool. I'll have a link down below where you can get one. Um, this one is made by Tusk, but what you're gonna do is these two little um, uh, knobs right here, they insert into the flywheel right here and you'll adjust it, clamp it down, and then that will give you the ability to keep the flywheel from spinning while having access to the nut. So. Um, they're just a, basically a big old pair of ice grips with some specialty ends and a pretty sweet tool really. So let me tighten this up, we'll clamp it down, and then we'll grab our torque wrench and try to torque this thing without any issue. So I got my torque wrench set up to 44 foot-pounds, what it calls for, and I'm just going to be nice and, nice and easy with this thing. Oh, it popped off there. Kind of an awkward angle here to be doing this. Yikes! All right, got my flywheel torqued finally, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, now we're gonna put our ignition cover on. I'm choosing to go ahead and put the gasket on. I probably don't need it because this uh, this other cover. Um, that I ordered basically has a built-in rubber gasket on it, but what the heck I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway just because I can and uh, Who knows a little extra protection never hurt so we're gonna go ahead and put this baby on Just line it up put our bolts in I'm pretty pretty excited about this new bolt hardware kit that I bought for the bike to just dress everything up it really it really adds to the whole thing and I'm I could not be happier with it right now it sure makes me excited to have you know it's it's not it's not a performance upgrade or nothing like that it's just kind of a bling factor and man when you're building a bike this nice it it just it's so worth it in my opinion it's so worth it Okay, on to the reed cage and the intake boot. Um, cool thing is this bike came with a V-Force reed cage with some carbon reeds and they are in perfect condition. So um, I didn't do anything other than just clean up the cage and we're gonna put it all in. And uh, I actually left the original gasket on it because it looks so good. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and roll with it. Now, um, the air boot does not require a gasket at all because it is rubber. So it just goes right on over top. Now, like I did the uh, ignition cover, I'm just going to snug these up by hand and uh, not worry about any torque spec or anything like that. So I don't even know if there honestly is one on this, but this is a rubber boot, so. All right, we're back on the other side of the engine. We're gonna start with our uh, main crank seal on this side. Now it consists of an o-ring and the sleeve almost like the counter shaft sprocket Seal actually identical to it. So we're gonna add a little bit of lube to the o-ring same way and to make sure that the o-ring is the correct one It should fit perfectly inside of that um, uh, Sleeve just like so so we're gonna oil it up put it on Cool, there we go. Now we're gonna put in our keyway just so we don't forget. Um, our little Woodruff key, cause I probably would if I didn't put it in now. And again, you wanna face it down. That way when you put on your primary um, gear that it slides on nice and easy. Okay, let's move on to the shift mechanism. All right, the next thing we're gonna install is our little uh, locating device for our shift drum. 
Put a little bit of lube on it. A little bit more lube in that bearing since it's going to be covered up now. And uh, that little pin lines up with that slot, obviously. And just stick it right in there like so. And now we can move our shift drum. Okay, once you got that in, next thing you're going to do is take your washer, place it on your little threaded shaft here, and then we're going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on this just to secure it, um, and then we're going to torque it by hand, and we're going to torque it fairly snug. Um, not crazy, but just snug. Now once you get it in there, you can just turn the shift drum until it stops, and then use that as your... Um, pressure to tighten it and you don't want it like I said you don't want to tighten it super tight because you'll break off a pin that's inside that shift drum and then you'll have major major issues it's a full case rebuild so just nice and snug with your uh, T handle if you got one okay good to go on that all right now we're gonna install our little locking lever um, as if you guys can remember from the first uh, teardown video, this is a piece that was broken. So we've got a brand new one here. And uh, it goes to together uh, pretty simply. Um, let me grab our pieces here. You've got a bolt first, and then a washer. And then your shift lever with the actual ball bearing roller facing the inside. And then you've got this little spacer bushing that goes right in here like that. And that uh, that is everything assembled other than the spring. Now the spring here, I gotta remember which way the spring goes. I may have to look. Okay, yeah, it goes like this. So the spring hooks on this little tab right down here on the bottom. So it will hook like so when it's put together correctly. So there it is all assembled. So refer to the manual. Um, you know refer back to what I just showed you if you have to rewind a million times but it, it's it's not too bad it's pretty simple and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this in I've never actually installed this type before so we will see um, how much tension it's gonna take to get it in I'm gonna put just a little bit of blue Loctite on this one also because this is one piece I do not want to have come undone that would be a bad bad day of writing for sure All right, so um, the spring actually rests right here um, on the side of this uh, this little notch in the case. Okay, I'm gonna try to install this. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any promises, but these things can be a pain in the butt to install. So here goes nothing. <clears throat> All right guys, I went ahead and installed this first because I was having fits with it. So now I'm gonna install my little detent, my little um, dealio here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just take my pliers here and just grab this, bring it on down, and then I can install this. This is working out so much better. Just like so. Okay, cool. So now I could actually just take this and go through um, my gears if I wanted to. So pretty sweet, pretty sweet. All right, that's on, that's on. Let's move on to our shift linkage and everything else that's gonna tie up this area. Okay, the next thing we're gonna install is our little shift paws here. Now I'm going to show you on one just in case you took yours apart. The way these work is you're going to slide this little pawl off and then you've got a bucket 
and a tiny spring. So if you took it apart, you're going to have a spring, a bucket, and then a pawl. And you want to put it back together the way that I just did right there. Now, these things like to shoot apart because um, they're under spring tension, obviously. Um, but they can be kind of a pain in the butt. So um, Now, you're not going to be able to put this in and then put the shift plate on. So you want to take the shift plate, like so, move your paws over, or your little um, stopper there, and then you're set. You're good to go. So you can go ahead and maneuver this into place. So the um, easiest way to do this is just to make sure that this is set um, at a spot where um, you can actually um, move it and get it in place. So, okay, all one unit, just like so. And then um, you may have to collapse these paws just a little bit to get it to slide inside of the um, shift drum there. just like so. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten up our plate. Now, last but not least is our actual shift lever. And I'm going to lube it right where the bearings are going to be riding. You can see the little detents right there where they'll be riding. And we will shove it right on through the case. And then, here we go. This is going to sit inside. This little pin is going to sit inside this spring like that. And then you're going to push it down and lock it in to your lever there. And now we are completely set up on our shift linkage. Okay, now the Kickstarter has multiple pieces. Um, what I'm going to do is show you guys, if you took it apart accidentally or intentionally, you have to time the Kickstarter. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. It's very, very simple and super easy to do. Okay guys, so we have a couple parts here. We need to time them. Now, this hole in the shaft is the most important thing you need to pay attention to. Um, that is how you're going to time the other pieces. Now. You've got your shaft here. This, the, all this is going to stay intact unless you take that circlip off, which or snap ring off, which I'm sure nobody has done. But what you can do is you can take this little paw, and this little paw. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll try to get it on camera here. There is a little circle right there. You can kind of see it. Yep, right there. That is supposed to be in line with the hole in the shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on like so and as you can see I've got my little circle which is right there in line with the hole in the shaft so you can't really mess it up if you mess it up you're off like 20 degrees so or 30 degrees it's quite a bit so once you get that on there that's it there you're gonna slide your spring over the top you're gonna to put your washer on that takes care of this side now the other side very very simple you have that hole in the top that we were talking about earlier. You're going to take your spring and you're going to take the um, piece that has the, uh, the folded over end. Whoops, it inserts right into that hole. But you want to make sure it's that way and not that way. That's the wrong way. So insert it. Put that on like so. And you notice I'm not dropping it all the way down like this. I'm holding it. This plastic ring will go on next. And this plastic ring has that little slot in it. And it, that little slot fits right over that um, the spring. So now we've got this thing completely together and ready to be installed. It's that simple. Okay, now to install our Kickstarter shaft, what we need to do is we need to look at our little pawl here. This piece right here, I didn't take mine out the whole time I kept, I kept it in the case because there's no reason to pull it out. Um, this slides in behind there and holds the Kickstarter kind of in place temporarily until we can get the spring to tighten it. So I'm just gonna insert it like so. Make sure you have your washer in there and your spring. Go ahead, insert it, twist it, and get it kind of where it stops. 
And then at that point, you're gonna take your spring and you're gonna pull it all the way around and insert it into that hole right there. And this thing is home. Now this is going to spin and that's perfectly fine. But, um, well, maybe I got it off. Did I get it off just a bit? I think I did. So my spring is off just a hair. So I've got to, yeah, see my little plastic ring popped out. So if yours does that, just no worries. Just pop it back out and then uh, get your little plastic retainer ring back where it's supposed to be. So, okay, there we go. So now I can twist this down, put it in my home. There we go. Okay, that's that. Pretty simple, the Kickstarter shaft is installed. Okay, the next thing on our list is our primary gear. Um, it goes on the crankshaft itself. Now, before you put the primary gear on, you wanna make sure you put your Woodruff key in and it just goes in just like so. Make sure you kind of tip it kind of at a downhill angle, that way this will go on easily. And then the tapered side, or, the, or sorry, the raised side, I guess it would be. The raised side is gonna go towards um, the, uh, the middle of the motor. So you're gonna just put it on just like so. All right, now after we've got that on, we're gonna go ahead, take our lock washer, and then of course our nut, and we're gonna put it on. And this is a left-hand thread, so um, you can't really mess that up, it won't thread on. And to get this tight, um, we're not gonna be able to torque it right now, um, cause I don't have a, uh, the tool that holds this actual primary gear. But what we'll do is once we get our clutch basket on, we will put a penny or um, something in there to jam the gears and we will actually torque it that way. KTM does not have a torque spec in their manual for this, so we're gonna get it pretty dang tight. Actually, we'll probably put a little bit of blue Loctite on it before we finally torque it. All right, moving on, the next thing we're gonna do is put our starter gear on or intermediate gear or idler gear, whatever you wanna call it. Before you can put the gear on, you need to put the washer on first and then the gear. I'm pretty sure it can be put on either way. It shouldn't matter at all, because um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same both ways. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide it right on. It should fit in there perfectly fine with your, um, and mesh perfectly fine with your Kickstarter gear, and that's installed. All right, before we get too carried away here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to these gears, just to kinda give them a little bit of lube before startup. Um, can never have too much lube, if you know what I'm saying. Let's get a little bit on there. The next thing we're going to put on would be our collar for our clutch basket here, our clutch basket bearing, whatever you're going to call it. Um, we're going to slide it on like so, and then we're going to put just a little bit of lubrication on here, and then we're going to slide our needle bearing on. Now, um, our needle bearing is what allows the uh, clutch hub to turn freely and the inner clutch basket, I guess I should say. Okay, now we'll get our clutch basket. Before we could have put our clutch basket on, there's a washer right there. We wanna inspect our clutch basket always because um, this is a wear part and it's a very expensive wear part. And if you can see right here, there are these little teeny ridges. Now this is where the um, discs, the, or sorry, the clutch plates have wore into the clutch basket fingers just a little bit. Now this is not bad at all. This is just normal wear and this is very acceptable. Um, I don't even need to clean these up because I really can't feel that. Um, I can see it, but I can't really feel it. So um, that's a good thing. Now, if these get really deep, you're gonna have a sticky clutch, you're gonna have engagement issues, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So um, check that before you go ahead and put it on. And uh, if, if so, sometimes if these are not very deep, you can go ahead and you can take a file and kind of file these down nice and flat again and get a little more life out of your basket. But um, otherwise, either replace your basket or just get like a Henson set with the, the last uh, way longer than the clutch plates. That's the whole point of, of uh, a uh, upgraded clutch basket. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can put just a little bit of lube on top of this bearing too. Just a little bit help things out. Okay, we're gonna slide our clutch basket on and it should mesh with that idle gear perfectly fine with no issue. Um, and our primary gear, so 
be kind of finicky until it goes goes all the way on maybe unless you're just gonna be a pain in the butt because I'm filming come on baby slide on there maybe easier to just slide the bearing in first and then go go all the way in there we go okay the next thing we want to put on would be our washer which spaces our inner clutch hub out from our basket there and then go ahead and slide your inner clutch hub on now um there we go okay now the next thing we're going to put on would be our locking ring and what this does is this keeps the nut um, tight to the inner clutch hub um, that way if it decides to loosen up or back off um, it can't so um, now this is starting to drive me really insane to be honest with you guys this uh, KTM engine rebuild manual that I have. It's a KTM manual. It doesn't have torque specs in it. That or I'm just dumb to finding them. Um, but uh, these kind of things right here have a torque, a torque value. And I'm gonna go ahead and just go with about 50 foot pounds, 40, I'm gonna go with 40 foot pounds just to be safe on this nut here. And then we'll go ahead and bend our tabs down. Um, and then at the same time, we'll also torque this down. We'll probably go about 40 on it also, but we'll put a little bit of um, Loctite on this one. Do not do not Loctite this one. Okay, are you guys ready to watch me struggle? Now this is a clutch holding tool right here. I'll put a link below in the description of where you can get it. And um, basically what this does is this holds our inner clutch basket from spinning so that we can torque it down. Now I got my settings right so that this will get tight on it. I'm just going to let it go ahead and um, touch here on the ground. And I've got my torque wrench. I decided to go to like 35 foot-pounds, which would be uh, about right there. So we're going to run that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to snug this nut down and get it to where um, we stop it, 35 foot-pounds. And that should be tight enough. There we go. Just like so. Okay, and actually, I'm gonna go just a little bit more because I don't know if you guys can tell, you probably can't. This little tab right here, or this one right here, the nut can turn just a little bit more and then this tab will lay over perfectly flat. So I'm thinking my torque was pretty dang close to, to what I thought it was. So we're gonna go to like 45 foot pounds and that should turn that nut just enough that that tab will lay down. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. So 45 foot-pounds is what I'm going to go for on that. That's what I would tell you guys to do based off of not having the torque spec myself. Okay, so that is torqued. Let me zoom back out here and we'll get back to what we were doing. All right, and then I'm just going to take uh, some channel locks. I'm going to bend this one down. I'm going to bend this one down and uh, that should be good enough. Now, if you can't get channel locks in here, um, you can use just a screwdriver and kind of pry it down and that works just fine also uh, I think I'm gonna have to do that actually because it's kind of being a pain in the butt to get to right there so okay I got that one started get this one started there we go now I should be able to grab it with my channel locks bring it all the way down okay that is torqued and on now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jam this gear so we can tighten this up and that will um, final up this uh, the torque on this now I talked about taking it off well I forget it's left hand thread um, we're gonna put just a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on it because as you guys know I don't use red on nothing and I'm gonna go ahead and torque this <coughs> to the same <coughs> excuse me to the same uh, spec that I did the uh, clutch basket just because I can um, but we're gonna use Lincoln this time we're gonna put him right in there and he's gonna be our gear jammer so let me switch my torque wrench and we're just gonna go ahead and suck this baby down now I'm using Lincoln because he is copper and he's not going to hurt nothing. 
as far as uh, metals go. So, um, what you I've actually seen this on YouTube videos. What you don't want to do is try to put something inside of the crankshaft to keep it from spinning and torque this. Don't freaking do that. Like that's just that's just stupidity. So, okay, and get it pretty snug. Okay, that's it right there. And then we're gonna go ahead. Flip our wrench around. Oh, there we go. And boom. You see how we bent him up pretty good? That's okay. Didn't damage the gears at all. Didn't introduce any anything bad in, in there to it. So that's done.